Dave Palumbo with Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for an installment of Muscle Serpents University. Guess what? We're here at my new snake facility. I know the last time you probably saw I was in my garage, my three-car garage, which was nice. But now we're finally in the facility here today and uh, I'm going to give you guys a little tour. It's not done yet. Obviously, we're still working on it, tweaking stuff out. But you know what? As you can see, I got my snake clock on the wall, so that means we're back in business. And uh, so let me give you a little tour. So, you know, when I set up this, this snake building, um, it's the downstairs, my ups upstairs is where I do my uh, RX muscle uh, media website stuff and my species nutrition where, as you guys know, I'm also in the bodybuilding world. And down here is, is all mine. It's my little man cave, as you could say, with all the snakes. I have three rooms. I'm actually only using two of them right now because they're not even filled up yet. The third room is my overflow room where I have a little office in there. I'll show you that as well. But this is the main, what I call the boa room. And I got my sinks here. I set up two slop sinks for myself. One is a double-sided one um, because I wanted to have the ability to put a tub in here and actually, you know, kind of like wash it out. You know, my sponges, my soap. This is my little one, so I can, if someone's working over there, I can have a second person working here in this little workstation for smaller stuff, filling water bowls, washing out stuff. I got some cabinets here for storage space. I got some shelves. I got, you know, pretty much everything I need. If you look over here, I got my refrigerator, which is the freezer part is filled up with the uh, frozen rats. And the refrigerator part actually is just filled with the, uh, like antibiotics, <laughs> actually, in case we get any kind of respiratory any kind of illness or anything like that, and some syringes. But that's uh, my refrigerator. And then let's uh, let's look at the bow room first. If we swing the camera around here, we can see I just set up some new racks, some new cages. I got these from Vision. I want to show you these cages. I'm really kind of psyched about them. I haven't really put anything in there yet because I'm just trying to get the temperatures tweaked out and everything. These are Vision cages. Okay, they're blown plastic, essentially. The bottom ones are 633s. They're six foot cages, and they're really wide as well, and they got nice height. These top ones are what we call 622s. They're the same six foot in length. They're just, um, they're not as tall, and they're not as wide. So as you can see, they don't go all the way to the end here. Um, you don't really want to put these huge ones on top because they're very deep, and it's almost impossible to get your hand in there. If you look in here, it's very hard to get to the back of this tub to clean. Um, even at, even on ground level, it's hard. So you don't want to put these up high because now you're on a ladder and you have to try to get in there. I have bad shoulders anyway, but it's, it's, it's a little hard to, to do that. So I have, I basically got eight cages. I got the, the 633s in the bottom, 622s on top. I'm going to be putting some, um, my albino olive pythons in here because they're getting too big for these cages. And I'm thinking about, you know, now that I'm in Florida, once I get my license, I'm thinking about maybe even doing some berms, because Burmese python's always been something I wanted to do, and now I have to set up a there. Okay, if you look over here, these are what we call 422 vision cages, and these are gonna be for the carpet pythons, because I do have some carpets in boa tubs, but you know what, they, they're they better display animals. They like to move around, they like to be seen. These are a little higher than the cages I have. So I'm gonna put the carpets in my, especially my adult males in here so they have a little more room. Cause right now I've been keeping them in the V70s, which are smaller tubs. I'll put some of the females in there. I might go another, another layer higher on these too as well. I haven't, I haven't thought about it yet, but these are just set up just now. I put, if you notice, I put the crates on the floor because when you put this cage directly on the floor, it's almost impossible to get in there and clean it. It's, you have to lay it out with your face on the, on the cement. So I thought that wouldn't be fun. So I, I put these on crates. It's a cheap, uh, I guess you could say, fix right here without having to build a wood frame. I don't really like wood in a, in a snake room where there's a lot of humidity. Bugs. Not, I'm not into bugs. As you can see over here, we got the uh, AR, we have the, these are the vision boa tubs right here. Okay. And like these, these are the freedom breeders. I actually got a lot of these freedom breeders from Manny over at Perfect Predators. He was getting rid of some, getting some new ones. And as you can see, I got my boas in here. You can see our, uh, she'll be breeding next year. This is our, my sun glow, possible head, uh, entering female. Here's my pride and joy. This is our super fire. 
Super Fire Diamond. It's from Jeremy Stone. This female should hopefully next year be ready to go. She's a great eater and uh, getting her up to size. Let's see what else we got here we can show you off. This is my, um, what we call Bloody Salmon. Uh, blood. It's the Blood Boa gene with the hypomelanistic gene in there. That's the Bloody Salmon, we call that. And then it's, she's also het for albino. So we could put, and then she's a sharp albino head. So we can get some sharp bloods next year, also called the fire opal. Let's see, hopefully she'll be able to breed next season. She's just getting up to size now. If you look here, I know all you guys who are all Python fans, my male is really getting up to size now. This is my male albino, excuse me, head albino, olive python. He's, a, he's really, 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 most people are afraid of olive pythons if they're gonna bite. He is just, he's like a little puppy, this guy. He's fast, but he's a puppy. And I've had him since he's like a little baby, Jeff Hartwig. I got him from Jeff Hartwig. And hopefully he'll be able to finally breed my albino olive python female that's, a, that's a very big and very aggressive. She doesn't like anyone in her cage. She likes to eat them. I'll show you her in a second. We've, we've shown her before to you. She's right here. There she is. She's ready, ready to come out. Hopefully she'll actually breed. Oop, look, she's biting me. She's biting me. See, she's, she, I think she's hungry because she, she didn't, I only feed her every other week and she likes to eat. See, she's, she's usually not this bad, but you know what? We're going to keep her inside her cage. She's going to be going to a bigger cage. As you can see, this, this bone tub is just not big enough for her. And we're going to be putting her in a nice six foot cage. She's looking to eat me right now, but I'm not afraid of her. So she's not looking to take a bite right now. Once again, <laughs> you know, the olive pythons are really cool. You have to know their personality and you have to know when they're aggressive, when they're not. And when they're aggressive, you know, you try not to handle them. When they're in a good mood, which is usually right after they ate, <laughs> then you can handle them no problem. Now, I have a lot of um, boas that are possibly grabbing. Not sure. This is one from Vin Russo I got. This is a Russo red hypo. So it's hypomelanistic. Melanistic. It's also it's part of his pastel red line. And she's in the back right there. That's the female. They're also het sterling. Now, this is the male and the female in here. And hopefully, if she is gravid and she does give birth, we'll have a 25% chance of actually producing Russo reds, possibly even super reds, uh, sterlings, which are solid colored uh, boas. So that's exciting. This will be a first. I, know, I don't know if Vin's produced any this year or he's going to, but this will be super exciting if we do, if we do get some sterlings that are part of that red Russo line because it's vibrant. I mean, you can see these females are really vibrant. Um, I also have another interesting project here. This is Jeremy Stone. Uh, the fire, these are the Het Fire Diamonds. They're Fire Diamonds breeding. If we get a clutch from these guys this year, we have a 25% chance of getting a white snake, which is the Super Fire Diamond, and that's, that's the goal. Um, I don't know if we'll get them. We'll see, you know, once again, it's hard for me to tell if the boas are actually grounded. I don't have an ultrasound, so I'd rather just kind of say, hey, one morning, wait, we got great babies. Uh, what else do I have here? This one I've shown you guys before in, in, in previous videos. This is, this is my IMG, okay, increasing melanistic gene, also motley, also anuthristic, and it's head for albino, and I'm breeding her, well, she's been bred to this moon glow, which is a hypo albino and euthoristic. Okay, so we can get some IMG moon glows, which would be really cool. And that would be the, I guess, the ultimate we can get, but we can get a lot of in-between stuff as well. So who knows what we're gonna get. This is, a, this is an exciting, for me, a very exciting, you know, possibility here. Once again, I don't wanna say we're definitely getting them. I don't know if we're definitely getting them, but if they come, we might get some good stuff. One of the things that's really interesting that I wanted to talk to you guys about is that, you know, I moved from New York to Florida. I drove these snakes over a thousand miles over a 24 hour period. Then they were in my garage, my, you know, my three car garage, where it did get very warm for a certain part of the, you know, probably in March and April, it was very warm, they were in there. I don't know if that's something that's gonna affect their fertility. I have noticed with the ball pythons, which I'm gonna show you in the other room, that we've been getting a couple of clutches here and there. We're very late in the season, later than we normally are. Usually I have a lot of clutches on the ground already. And a lot of them are slugs. So I don't know, once again, because if, if it was too warm, we're speculating what could possibly have gone wrong. I don't know. I know we still have a lot that haven't, you know, laid their eggs yet. We'll have to see what, what that shows you. So let's go in the other room and I'm going to show you the ball python room. So this is the bow room, which is the big room. 
And this is my smaller room, but this is my second desk room, I guess you could say. I got my incubator set up over here. We have some clutches in there. What's gonna attach, we don't know yet. Um, some stuff does not look like very good. Some stuff does look good. Light on here. And I have one, <laughs> I have one egg left in my, uh, in my carpet python clutch for my double head to double head snow. I don't know, I, it would be a miracle if that thing hatched as a snow. It would be God gracing us. <laughs> anyway, we still have a lot to go. As you can see here, I have, uh, both of I have vision racks on this wall, if you look. These are all visions. These are, this is an ARS rack that I got from a friend of mine. Um, I do love these, actually. They're a little expensive, and they're expensive to ship, so I usually stick with vision. I feel vision, for the price that you pay for it, you get a good rack, it's easy to clean, you can hose these things off, and we got a lot of girls, you know, that are, that are grabbing here. Hopefully, this girl specifically um, is, is, a, is a great one. She's an orange dream fire uh, and she also is Enchi. Okay, I just want to make sure that this was the right one. So she's fire Enchi, orange dream. You can tell she's got great color. Um, hopefully I bred her to an orange dream lesser had albino. So this should be an interesting pair. I don't know when she's going to, she's probably doing about, I think she just had a pre-lay shed about seven days ago. So we're probably looking at another three weeks. Beautiful potential right there. We also, this is also another really exciting one that I have. If you look here, this is a hurricane, which is the Hans Winter morph from Germany. A hurricane, you can see those swirlies on her. Het clown. Um, I'm pretty sure she's gravid. I think she just had her pre-lay shed the other day. I'm hoping she's gonna lay. That should be good. We, there's never been a clown hurricane yet, so that's something I'm looking forward to hopefully producing. You never know. As you can see, I have my table set up over here. I have a lot of supplies here. The, this paper I got from Uline, they're big, huge sheets, and they're thick. I'm using this, I'm gonna use this as my, as my lining of my cages in the big uh, vision cages I bought, I showed you a little earlier. Uh, this is really a cheap way, a cheaper way to go. I use paper towels in all my smaller cages. I was using some other stuff, some other liners that just were very expensive in, in my boa cages. I'm gonna go with this now. I think it's cheaper. Once again, it, 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 it fits better in the cages. Uh, you might have to change it a little more frequently because it doesn't absorb it maybe as well, but I think this is a better way to go. I don't like newspaper because it gets all of your hands. I don't like the ink aspect of it. I don't think the ink can possibly be that great for you. So I know a lot of you use newspapers. I didn't even know they even printed newspapers anymore, but evidently <laughs> evidently they do. Um, here's, an inch, here's a cool, for those of you who are carpet fans, here's a really cool zebra albino that I have. I have a pair of these. I can't, these are obviously babies, only a year old, and they're gonna take a while to grow up, probably be a couple of years before we produce them, but would love to produce the super, super zebra albino, if it is even viable. I know a lot of us have been speculating in the, in the carpet python community if it is a good or not. I haven't seen any that are out there on the ground yet that actually made it, so. Once again, a lot going on here at uh, Palumbo's Pythons and Boas this year. There's a lot of potential, a lot of stuff, so to speak, uh, still to be laid. Once again, our season got really delayed because of the weather, I think, and because of the move. But hey, you know what? Whatever I get this year is great. Whatever I don't get, hopefully next year we'll, we'll do better. I'm going to show you the final room, which has potential, obviously, to have more snakes in it if necessary. But right now, we're still using it kind of as storage. It's nice to know you have expansion capabilities. And these are all my files for my, my nutrition company here. As you can see, those will be snake racks on the wall. And if you look at the top of the wall, you can see I put all my plugs, I had my electrician put all my plugs up high. So the thermostats get plugged in up there. I don't have to run wires all the way down to the you know, floor. I have my little uh, desk set up over here as well. If I want to do any kind of uh, shipping or any kind of stuff. Usually I go upstairs and do it, but uh, I have the ability here. I have rack, I have some shelving on the wall to put supplies. And once again, I have a lot of expansion capabilities here, and that's what's important, I think, because, you know, the collection's going to grow. It's, it's inevitable. I mean, I'm addicted. I'm in, 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 in it for the long haul. And we have expansion capabilities here. I have, I have climate control. We can put heat on if necessary, really unnecessary in Florida, more so air conditioning. But I can open the doors up. I have a humidifier. Actually, my, if you look at my thermostat, I think a lot of you might find this interesting. I didn't even know you could do this, but the... This thermostat here, 
which is my air conditioning thermostat, my heat thermostat, actually has a humidity control on it. I'm going to show you guys this. This is really cool. Um, I could set the humidity level. Right now I have it set at 70%, so that when my air conditioning goes on and cools the rooms, it doesn't suck the humidity out, which a lot of air conditionings do. And so this is, this is a great option. If you have the ability, if you're starting from something from scratch, ask your air conditioning guys about an air conditioner that actually you can control the humidity on. Uh, once again, I put up a lot of these shelves. If you look, I have all my shipping supplies here, and I have my overflow stuff here. You know, you can never have enough shelving, I found out, you know, when, you, when you're setting up. I must have put eight or ten of these shelves up throughout my building upstairs in my, in my nutrition room as well to put all the nutritional products on the shelves. But here you see it, you know, I, uh, I'd like to do some more videos, breeding videos in the next couple of weeks. We're just really getting back on our feet here because we just moved into the building. Hopefully you like the snake room. If you like, want to see more, if you want to see more of what I do here, say like in the comments, give me ideas, and I will do it, I promise you. Dave Palumbo here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for another installment of Muscle Service University.